we've created that frame and started generating some of the arrangement drawings what I might also want to do is start to use this frame within an analysis design solution so I just pick up on the column properties what we've got in there are things like the column section size and material grade etc but we've also got an analysis page where we can control the actual location of things like the element that's going to be generated from within the Tecla model we can also set up start and end releases on the members as well so there we've got fixed base and then we're free at the top if I select a column element sorry a beam element what we've got there then on the analysis page again the same control over it so now we're using the reference axis for the actual location of the analysis element that's going to be generated but we could be using neutral axis if we wanted to generate more of a, a center line model again we've got start and we've got end releases on that member as well so in this case we've actually got pin ends on those members before we take it to analysis we could create additional loads and load groups so there we've got a default group, we've also got load 1 which could be dead, we could add additional ones to it and then we could start to generate some loads, so we could create a point load you could pick a location in the model and that's just created a point load at that location which we can then highlight, modify, we can change the orientations, change the magnitudes etc so we can make that minus 10 kilonewton meters vertically we could also create point loads, line loads so I might want to put a line load from that point to there and again we can modify that in the model and we can create area loads so I'll just do this one as an example we can create an area load by picking three points to generate that rectangular area and with that area load we could set up obviously again the values so we could say minus 10 in that direction at that corner so we can have different values at different corners and the last one in there minus 10 and modify so there's our area load that we've created as well, based off the same geometry and that all works with the magnetic grid lines as, as we've shown earlier so now what I want to do is create an analysis design and model so we go to the analysis design model dialog we click on new and then we can choose let me just bring this dialog into there the format that we're going to use for the analysis whether it's an industry standard file format such as CIS2, IFCs or we can actually choose specific analysis and design vendors that we're going to link with so in this example I'm actually going to work with STAD Pro we can use the analysis model name so again we can put names in there and then we can set up the creation method whether we want the full model or whether we want selected parts, selected parts with loads etc I'll leave it set as being full model we can also override the positioning of the elements at this particular stage as well so we could have a neutral axis model or we can use the model default which is what is set up at the moment which is using the individual member level creation setup. No definition, again we get different options in there whether how we want to connect this element together. In the, our example the whole frame is actually connected already anyway but if you've got elements that aren't touching each other you can either force to centric connection or you can use rigid links to do that. If we click on OK what we'll get then is this dialog box that tells us we're using STAD Pro to do the analysis. The number of parts is 74. Currently we've no results available. And all we need to do then is say run the analysis at the moment we haven't created any load combinations so let's generate some default load combinations that we can use and then hit the run button again and now we'll go across into the analysis and design application which in this case is, is STAD and we'll see the STAD model then sat there with the model that's come in from Tecla so it's taking all the analysis elements across there, we've got the bases on the bottom if we look at the general we'll see we get also the concrete elements coming across as well as the steel frame that we've created now there's different ways that you can work with instead, we could do a design optimization or we could actually just go through and do some manual changes ourselves so if I just pick the columns go into the section database and just pick a different section size so we could see that chart size coming back into Tecla once we've done the analysis so we can assign that and close and then if we say analysis and run run the analysis that's fine model has changed obviously because we've done those manual changes to it so the analysis is now running within STAD the Tecla model is still available that we can be continuing to create some drawings, material lists etc we could carry on using STAD then obviously to look at the analysis results that's fine and we can then just say update properties again we're just using STAD to do this once we finish within STAD 
we can then exit out of there take us back into the Tecla structures model and then what we need to do then is just say get the results and that will bring back then those design results coming back in from STAD so 74 members had results you will also see in there if I can just minimize that dialog this is the actual optimization results we did manual changes within STAD and you can see there it's highlighting that column group and it's saying that the size was changed within that STAD environment from a 254 by 73 down to a 152 so we can then pick and choose what we want to do do we want to update it or not and we could say accept all and they're the only changes that are made within that analysis and design iteration and you can see now that column size is updated again because we've got the parametric connections applied they're also updated if I click select the beam and we go to its properties we can also look at the end codes on that member and you can see there it's bringing back the shear force that's been calculated with that analysis design iteration so we've taken the model from within Tecla structures we've taken that across to the analysis design and then we've also brought those results back and if we went back into the drawing we created earlier such as the foundation plan we'll also see in there that, that column size has also changed and again if we do a dimension onto the actual drawing you'll see that it's now using 158 which is obviously the size for that particular column as it's come back in again